Welcome to Collector's Edition 101. Today we're going to be doing some fun unboxing of a bunch of graded cards that we got in. We're going to be talking about the history of a lot of these cards as well and their influence on some of the games and their eras of formats that they came out in. Um, for the first set of cards, uh, this is a little special tree that we have. Uh, now these were already unboxed. It was just it was too much excitement. We couldn't contain ourselves here and we just had to get first looks at these. So we're going to start with our first card today. Now, the first card that we have is a yellow border with blank Pokemon filler. Now, what these cards are were back in the earlier days of Pokemon, uh, they did a lot of pre-releases, and when they did these events, they would send pre-release kits to various stores and hobby shops all across the country. And in these pre-release kits with both of the packs and the booster boxes, they would also send bricks of energy cards. Now, these energy cards would sometimes, once in a while, you get these blank fillers where the energy was not printed on it. So, the first one that we got back today was from CGC, and we got a wonderful 7.5 on this one. Really kind of a cool card. You don't get to see these too often. Um, got a 9 on the centering, 7.5 on the surface, 7 on the corners, and 7.5 on the edges. Overall, not a bad grade, and it's kind of a cool, weird card that has a nice bit of history to it. So, we're going to set that one aside, and we're going to take a look at our next card. So, once again, another filler. Have you guessed it? Yes. We hear All four of these cards that we're going to first look at are all the energy filler cards back from the early pre-release kits. Now, this one got a 7, so not as bad as our first one. The centering's a little bit off. It has an 8.5. Uh, 6.5 on the surfaces, a little bit more wear than usual. 7 on the corners, and a 7.5 on the edges, so it locks up pretty well compared to our other. Once again, another 7.5. Now if we compare this to our other one, they are literally same exact grade all across the board. Centering, surface, corners, edges, kind of a cool little bit here. And finally, another 7. Now does this one compare to the first as well? Ooh. So, the centering is a little bit worse on this uh, one that we just revealed. Surfaces are a little bit better, corners are on par, and so are the edges. So, even though there was only a 0.5 difference between all of the grades, it still didn't affect the grade in overall, which is pretty cool and good to know. So, once again, very unique set of cards here. Um, <clears throat> they don't come up too often, and they're kind of cool to find. They're a nice little weird collectible piece to have in anyone's collection and um, hopefully you learn something new about these guys and their origins and where they kind of came from now they can be found in various other places too sometimes you'll get them in random booster packs or energy bricks still in some of the pre-releases now but it's becoming a little bit less and less common so as cool as these are i am super excited to move on to our next uh next thing which we have a fresh box that came back. I haven't even opened this yet. I'm excited to see these cards. I know what's in here. We don't know the grades. So I will say that a lot of these are probably going to be some really cool collectible pieces that not a lot of people have seen too often. So we're just going to go ahead and tear right into this first one here. And... Pardon for any box cutting that may be picking up on the mic. I'm trying to be extremely careful because these cards are super, super cool. I do not want to risk any damage to these guys at all. Alright. So. There it is. Still completely sealed. Fresh from PSA. I'm very, very excited about this one. So, let's just get right into it, shall we? Oh, man. There is no greater excitement than opening a fresh set of slabs. Alright. Because I want this to be a surprise, we're going to do these all face down, and we're going to slowly reel them one by at a time here. So, here we go. 
Our first card today is the 2011 Tropical Beach promo. Um, now, these were obviously given out to top contenders of the World Championships in 2011. Um, overall, a very exclusive card. Very powerful in its, uh, in its format in the early Black and White series. Um, and what it lets you do is, once during each player's turn, that player may draw cards until he or she has seven cards in their hand. Uh, if he or she does, that player's turn ends. Now, this card saw a lot of uh, very heavy play in Keldeo Blastoise builds, where the idea being just trying to get set up as quick as possible in the early parts of the game to dominate heavily in the end game. Um, I personally played the deck a few times. I was missing the tropical beaches, though. It was a little out of my budget at the time. But overall, this card is just insane. I did finally eventually get my hands on a quarter finalist one of these um, after I was playing the deck, and it sat in my collection for a little while before finding home with another collector. Um, overall, very beautiful card. This one got a 6, which if we flip her over, we can definitely see it has a little bit of... Uh, Whitening here on the uh, top middle of the card. Um, definitely, definitely makes sense there. Uh, still, beautiful card. I love the fact that they're just having a little happy beach day. You know, to pick Ashwa, Snivy, Psyduck chilling in the background on his floaty. I'm loving it. Such a beautiful card. Next card. Another tropical beach. Now, this one did get a 5, a little bit worse for wear on the condition in comparison. Um, a little bit more edge wear, that same, that same mid-top damage, um, but still a very good condition card. Now, it is only a 5, but, you know, people forget that, you know, this is still a very excellent condition card. Very beautiful piece, and it's great to add to any collection. Next one. Oh third tropical beach this one however is a staff promo um obviously the staff promos were given to the staff who help uh any of the events at the world championships from the main event side events so on so forth um obviously we can tell the difference between the two because of the obvious staff stamping in under the text box now that is kind of a unique placement for these uh staff uh, gold stamps because usually in a lot of the pre-release promos and so on and so forth and the regional promos throughout the ages they would actually place that staff stamp right up here in the bottom right of the art box um, so I don't know why they decided to change that for this one but personally I think it looks a lot better in this location and I would love if they were to go back to this in the future if they do start printing staff promos again for events um, oh <laughs> I got so excited about talking about the staff stuff that we didn't even discuss the grade. Um, in comparison to the other two, this one came back in eight, a lot nicer condition. We do not have that middle little edge whitening on the upper right of the card. Um, overall, very, very beautiful. The centering looks like it's maybe a little upshifted from the bottom if you compare it to one of the others. So that could be why it maybe didn't get that nine is because of that upward left shift that it seems to have. But still, beautiful, beautiful card. I wish I had those three back when I was playing that Blasters Keldeo deck. That would have been a lot of fun. And oh my goodness, guys, check out this beauty. I wasn't, I honestly thought we had another beach coming. Um, but man, Rayquaza Gold Star. This is just such a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, the Gold Star series was, in fact, one of my favorite artwork series that Pokemon had ever done. And I mean, there's, there's not much else you can say. It's almost awe-inspiring how fantastic this art was. Um, you know, I would try to credit the artist here, but I feel I would butcher that name, and I just don't watch that type of disrespect on him or them. Uh, but yeah, so this one came back a 7. Beautiful grade, beautiful card. A little bit of uh, whitening on the bottom there. A little bit of surface wear, a little bit of edge wear. So the seven makes sense, but overall, this is such a cool, unique, beautiful card. Um, when I look at this one, I actually forget most of the time that it is a shining Rayquaza within the artwork, just because I am so fixated on the cool, 
expanding artwork that they did, that they went beyond the border and uh, really pushed artwork to the new uh, extreme for these type of cards. Um, these things have been soaring in price re recently, and a lot of the gold stars have. But, I mean, this is definitely the reason why, between the artwork and the nostalgia, the rarity of these cards, um, the entire gold star series was just super fantastic. So, let's move to our next one. Another Rayquaza star. Now, this is not that seven that we just had. This one is in a two. This one definitely saw some love. It was played. It was carried around. It was cherished. Overall, for a two, it doesn't look half bad. Um, a lot of the wear seems to be on the front. The back looks super good. Um... Yeah, I can't really see much else. Like, there's definitely a lot of edge wear along the corners, uh, some surface scratches. Definitely, it definitely has some wear on those edges. I think that's where a lot of it comes from. But overall, there's no creases that I'm seeing, minus that one little bit of flakiness on the top there. But still, a fantastic card. And hey, you know, it may be a two, but that could still be a fantastic price range for someone to add this card to this collection. <clears throat> and our next card, Mew Star. Now, Mew is personally my favorite Pokemon, so I was super excited to get this guy back. And the water choice was definitely different, but this was definitely during the Delta Species era, so they were all about making wonky types and mixing things up to different degrees. Um, this card was very sought after due to the playability of the card, due to the collectability of the card. It's Gold Star. It's Mew. It's super good in the format. Just like the, the first attack, you know, choose, for one colorless energy, you can choose an attack on one of your opponent's Pokemon and play uh, Mimicry copies that attack, but you do have to have the energy necessary to use that attack. So this was a great card in a lot of mirror matches, uh, where if you were out of your Pokemon that you needed for your setup, or if they were prized, you could definitely get uh, those early attacks out just through this guy. And, man, very, very beautiful card. Now, weird opinion, I personally think 1s are far more collectible than 10s. Now, don't get me wrong, 10s are fantastic, they're, they're amazing, I, I collect them myself, um, but 1s are almost a little bit trickier to get. Uh, the reason being is, especially with PSA, um, I mean, you could take a card out, you could crumple it, you could stomp on it, you could rub it in the dirt, but that's not guaranteed that you're going to get a 1. Uh, if the card is too damaged, PSA will reject it, saying it's too damaged to be created. If it's not damaged enough, it's going to probably get a 2. So it's just like that weird balance of heavy play and damage and anything else that makes this card a 1. And this card has history. 1s have history. Like 10s definitely have a lot of history as well. Um, could be you opened a pack, you pulled it as a kid, you slammed it in a sleeve, and you've had it in a binder ever since and never touched it. Um, but this guy saw some, saw some adventures. He was out there, he was in decks, he was on tables, he was in kids' pockets. Um, he saw the world, and here he is. If only cards could talk, huh? Hearing the stories off of this guy. So, we're going to move to the next card. <clears throat> and we have another Mew star. This one, not as, not as uh, beat up as our poor little one up there, but he's got it too. Personally, I think it'd be super cool to collect these guys in a perfect 1 to 10 sequence. I think that would be so much fun. Having 10 Mew stars graded 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10. Yeah, this guy definitely sees has a lot more wear in comparison on the back almost. It's a lot more edge wear. Um, our poor one here uh, was definitely a lot more creases, but this guy, he saw some... Uh, he saw some pocket time, maybe some, uh, maybe some concrete time out on the playground. Overall, still a very beautiful card. <clears throat> Moving to 
Moving on. Speaking of the Mew 1 through 10, we have another Mew Gold Star. This one is an 8. Big jump from our 2. Um, beautiful, beautiful condition on the back. I don't see any creases, no scratches, nothing. He looks pretty good, actually. A little bit of whitening on that upper left-hand side, but not too terrible at all. And on the front, definitely seeing some surface gunk there. Just a little bit of dirt specks on him, but, you know... I wouldn't want to risk damaging the card further by trying to clean him. I think he's perfect the way he is on this happy little 8 here. Um, beautiful, beautiful card. Moving on to the next card. You know, maybe my dream of 10 Mew Stars is closer than I thought. Here we have a Mew Gold Star Grade 4. I'm going to check out the back first. Back overall, not too bad. Seems a very heavy shift from that right side to left. Uh, definitely not as well centered as some of the others that we've had. Uh, otherwise, back isn't too bad. Some whitening on the edges. Fronts, pretty good overall too. A um, little bit of little crease right here. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's. Got a crease there, a crease there. I think between those and the uh, the bad centering and the edge wear, that, that four makes sense. But hey, four down, six to go. Is the next one a Mew Star? It is, but it is another four. So, double repeat on the fours here. Uh, this one also has a very heavy shift from that right side. Almost more extreme than the last one we had. Um... But otherwise, the back isn't too bad. It doesn't have as much edge wear as the previous one did, so I'm curious to see where the four came from. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing some uh, seeing some wear on the edges of the card. A bit of surface wear. A couple scratches on the foil. All of these things combined with the heavy shift definitely makes sense. I think they could have maybe gave it a five if they were having a good day. Got me one step closer to that ten Mew Stars. But hey... I'm not going to complain. Mew Star is still a Mew Star. We're going to go to our next card. So, looking at the back here, this one definitely has a bunch of love to it. Um, there's all sorts of edge wares all along the sides here. It's got a very heavy shift on that upper and to the left. So, this is definitely going to be a lower grade. Don't know the card yet, but I want to say it's a 2. Oof, it is a 1, but it is a Latios Gold Star. Another fantastic card where they went beyond the border. I mean, they did that with the Mew as well, but it was very much more subtle. The Latios and the Rayquaza Gold Star, they definitely went a lot more heavy on expanding past the borders. And to me, it just makes those cards really shine. And looking at the front, we definitely see why this guy is a 1 instead of a 2. Uh, you couldn't see it through the back, but now that we're looking at the front, he has a very, very heavy crease running all through this upper part of the picture. Um, this guy has some stories. He saw some play. He saw some love. Um, may have saw some playground time as well. But overall, he has finally found his happy home here for now. Moving on to the next card. So the back of this card overall looks pretty good as well. Not seeing any creases, a couple little edge marks and things. Um, overall, not a whole lot else. So, let's go ahead and do the reveal. And we have another Latio star. So, this one is in a little bit better shape. We have a 6 on the condition of this one. Um, now that I'm looking at the front here, seeing all sorts of wear to the left edges and the right edges. So a lot of this card's grade came from the edge wear, in my opinion. Uh, the shift doesn't look too bad. Maybe a slight up left shift from the backside view. Front looks great though. It's a beautiful card. I wish they made foils like this again. It'd be fantastic. They should just really do like a gold star revive and bring some new ones in it was a fun mechanic which for those of you that didn't know with gold stars um 
I remember correctly, you could only play one gold star in your deck, which is noted on the cards. So you really have to choose carefully if your uh, types tended to cross over. Moving on to our next card, back seems pretty good overall. Uh, not terrible. A couple bits of edge wear here and there. And it is another Latios Gold Star. Okay, so maybe I'm maybe I'm a little far from my Mew Gold Star dream. Maybe this Latios dream isn't too bad. We got a one, we got a six, now we got a three. Didn't hit that three in the Mew Gold Stars. Looking at the front, that three is a lot more obvious now. The back. Man, the back of this thing looked actually pretty good. It was deceptive. I totally would have thought this thing may have been like a five or six. But the front shows a lot more love to it. Uh, a lot of wear on the upper part of the card, right around the left side of the card as well. But still, very, very beautiful card. Moving on to the next one. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the back. Kind of a fun game I like to play. I like to look at the backs and try to guess the grade. Nine times out of ten I'm wrong because the front is usually where everything matters. So, back side of the card looks like the got some serious edge wear to it all around the card. Um, bit of surface gunk here and there. Just some surface wear. I'm gonna guess a... I'm gonna guess a four. It's a two. I should have went with my instinct. I wanted to say two right off the get-go. But now that we're looking at the front, the two is very, very obvious once again. Um... Looks like the card might be starting to peel in the upper left-hand corner. Very serious edge wear all around the card. But some of the foils even chipping off in here. This guy, this guy saw some saw some experiences. Alright, so we are up to a two, a three, a six, and a one. So we have a one, two, three, six. That's four gold stars. Four Mews. We did get four Mews, right? One, two, three, four. Yep, four Mews. To be fair, I don't think there's going to be another Latios Gold Star in here. But I could be wrong. Next up, back of this card looks not too terrible, but that's always been deceptive before. Um, a lot of uh, edge wear. And our first Jolteon Star. Jolteon Star, another beautiful, beautiful card amongst the Star series. Uh, this one came back in a grade 7. Overall, not too bad. Front looks very, very clean. I want to say this all came down to a lot of the surface wear and the edge wear. The card itself is fantastic. If you just ignored that 7 and looked at the card itself, this is a great piece to put up on the shelf, have on display. Uh... I think it's. Uh, I think this is one of my favorites too. Between the Rayquaza and the Jolteon, as much as I love Mew, they didn't really give it too much justice in the artwork. I feel like they really should have made it expand past the borders a lot more. But don't get me wrong, I still love them. So, Jolteon Star is Poke Power. It was once during your turn when you put Jolteon Star from your hand onto your bench, you may put one damage counter on each act of Pokemon. Not too bad, and agility was flip a coin if heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to Jolteon Star during your opponent's next turn. Pretty typical of the agility ability throughout the uh, course of the series. Uh, it's always been usually a coin flip if heads ignore all damage and effects. Um, fantastic and some tight pinches, but usually not a game ender. But it can, one coin flip can upset the entire game. So, next card. Back looks pretty good, and let's take a peek at the front. It's another Jolteon Star. So, this one came in at an 8. Beautiful, beautiful card. A little bit better than our last one. Edges look pretty good. Surface looks pretty good. A little bit of surface wear on that back there. I think if that wasn't there, we would have definitely probably gotten a 9 on this bad boy. But still, such beautiful. I love the crackling energy effect on this card. Next card. 
back doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look at the front. It's a Jolte. Oh my goodness, guys. We have a Jolteon Gold Star Gem Mint 10. Holy crap. I was not expecting this. Man, this thing is so gorgeous. Oh. And these Gold Stars are notorious for having terrible centering sometimes. It's usually those upshifts on the bottom. That's what gets you. But this one apparently had a beautiful centering, beautiful surfaces. I would have never guessed a 10 on this one. Man, that is so exciting. Such a pretty card. And yeah, I'm looking at this thing and I cannot find anything wrong with it. But the guys at PSA know what they're doing. This thing is beautiful. So we got a 7, we got an 8, we got a 10. Three very beautiful cards. I just want to keep staring at this thing, honestly. But we got to keep going. Got a lot of other fun things. Next card. Latias, Gold Star. And it is a 7. Not too bad. Front looks pretty good. A little bit of edge wear along the left and to the top. Something on the case there for a second. I thought there was something in the card. Thankfully, that's not the case. Looking at the back, we have that left to right, or that right to left shift again, as well as that upwards shift. Got a little fuzzy there. Get out of here, buddy. This is another gorgeous card in comparison. Like, all the gold stars were just fantastic. All the artwork was amazing and in fact you know now that i'm thinking about it i believe all of the artwork on the gold stars were done by the same person which makes a lot of sense that why they all look so great together can you imagine if they did like a panoramic picture with all of the gold stars if all the gold stars had connecting artwork and you could line them all up oh my goodness that would have been fantastic Maybe something to think about in the future with your uh, secret cards, Pokemon. We're going to move past this guy. Final card of this batch. So, we're going to look at the back. Back looks overall pretty good, pretty good, not terrible. Some edge wear along the sides. I'm going to give this card maybe a 7 as well. It is a Pokemon Center from 2001, and it is an 8. Uh, now, this card, for the longest time, was on the cheaper end of things, and only recently did it start spiking up within the last couple of years. Uh, apparently, it was a lot more harder to find than people realized. And, man, such a cool card. I like this little 3D animation artwork that they did for it. Very, very cool card. Very early in the days of Pokemon. I believe this was from the uh, Pokemon Center New York when it opened back in the day as well. Which, yep, I think that's uh, exactly why they marked that there. Beautiful, beautiful card. So, that is the end of this package, and man, there are all sorts of goodies. So, all together we got back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 gold stars. Oh, nope, I lied because we had some tropical beaches at the end. I almost forgot about 15 gold stars came back. And cool fact about all of these gold stars, the reason that a lot of them were in these lower grades and had all of this wear to them is these actually came from a uh, retro deck collection. So the gentleman had these uh, cards. He loved to collect the older formats of Pokemon. And so that's why a lot of these have that rough and tumble to them. Uh, he wasn't so much after the most pristine cards. He just wanted the cards to play the decks to have fun. And I thought that was a beautiful thing. And it was definitely a shame to see those uh, decks be pulled apart, but these cards have moved on to greater things now. And we're gonna move on from these guys. I still can't believe that we got an end on that Jolteon. That was just fantastic and blew my mind. So, we have our next 
package. This is a bit of a bigger one. We're going to get right into it. All right. We're open over here. We're open over here. Trying to be good not to cut myself. That would be a terrible time. Thankfully, I think the card case is all pretty secure. I don't think that would be a problem. Alrighty. Uh oh. Alrighty. Well, looks like uh, this guy had a little bit of smush love to him. I hope the cards are okay. Oh my goodness, this is a brick and a half. Whew. Alright, let's start with the smush guy. I'm gonna keep this guy up here. Uh, this guy had some uh, some wear here. Uh, I'm hoping everyone inside is okay. All right, this next batch is coming from CGC, which I don't know how to do this properly. I love the way they ship these things. But uh, being able to do these little surprise flips makes it a little difficult. I love these holders still. These holders are fantastic. I like to hang on to these in case I ever need to ship anything out as well. Alrighty, so we have about one, two, three, four, five in this first part. So let's just go ahead and start with our first one. It is a Charmander from Expedition. Uh, we got a grade 9 on this guy. Beautiful looking card. These CGC cases, I love them. Uh, I think they're fantastic looking. Love their hollow foil. Which, you know, I'm a multi-grader. I like PSA. I love CGC. I love Beckett. Personally, when it comes to the three, I think it just really depends on the card that you're getting graded and what you're kind of looking for. If you think you got a really nice high-end, possibly black label, definitely send it back it. But the other two, I think it's just personal preference of which ones you like more. So this Charmander got an 8.5 on the centering, 9 on the surface, 9 on the corners, and 9 on the edges. Overall, not too bad. I'm going to move on to our next one. We have Yvettel from Pokemon XY with an 8.5 grading. Got an 8.5 on the centering, 9 on the surface, 8 on the edges, and 8.5 on... Oh, I'm sorry, 8.5 on the edges and 8 on the corners. Another fantastic looking full art card. Oh, man, this takes me back. I remember when Mewtwo and uh, the X-Ball attack was a, a big problem in the next Destiny's On format. And they kept reprinting him and reprinting him. So he was always around, and you would just slam him in any deck because it was so good. And then finally, when you when Mewtwo is just about gone, here comes Yvettel with Evil Ball. Basically the same attack, but they did give it that one darkness stability, so you couldn't just slam it into every deck. Still a fantastic card, though. Love it. Next up, we have Vaporeon from Jungle. Beautiful first edition, 8.5 grade. Could be me, but when it came to those early jungle and fossil sets, I kind of favored the Vaporeon and a couple of others in the non-foil. The foils were fantastic and beautiful, but there's something about that like bubbling artwork behind the Vaporeon that looks so fantastic in non-foil form. Um, this one got an A5. Beautiful 9 centering, 9 surfaces, 8.5 on the corners and 8.5 on the edges. I think if we would have got one more 9 on one of those little subgrades there, I think this one guy might have squeaked by with a 9. But hey, 8.5, still not bad. Next up, Swablu from Hidden Fates. Got a 9 on this guy as well. So we got a 8.5 on the centering, 9 on the surface, 9.5 on the corners, and 9.5 on the edges. If the centering was a little bit better, I think we might have gotten that 9.5 grade, too. But these things are so cool. I was so happy that they brought this type of foiling back. Um, just that beautiful cosmic ray type effect. 
And final one from this first package here. We have a Mewtwo from the Black Star promo for Mewtwo Strikes Back, 6.5 grading. Uh, this was a very interesting artwork. I've always been on the fence about this card. Uh, I'm a big avid collector of Mewtwo's, Mews. Uh, and this artwork has just always struck me as, I like it, but I don't like it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, but man, he looks creepy, but in a good way. So if that's the vibe they were going for, they definitely pulled it off. Nine centering, five five on surface, eight on corners, and eight point five on the edges. You know, to be fair, it doesn't uh, doesn't surprise me that these guys kind of came back at a lower grade. Um, this was definitely the era when people were carrying the cards to school, trading at school, playing with them on the black tops. A lot of these cards saw a lot of rough times in those early days. So that's always a treat when you can find some that are in such good condition. Now, we're going to move on to the next big boy. Ooh, this guy's heavy. All right, let's try and get in there. Ooh, that is a huge slab of cards. I don't even know how I'm going to get this out of here. Is this the right way? Yep, these are the backs. We're going to be surprised. Alright, well I guess we'll do this a uh, couple at a time. There's the first wave. I'm going to get the second wave here. And... How about the third wave? All right. We got three stacks. So let's start with our first one. First card today. Machamp, base set, first edition, hollow. 8.5 on the grade. 9 centering, 8.5 on the surfaces, 8.5 on the corners, and 8 on the edges. Uh, some, co some cool history with the Machamp. This was the one that came with the structure decks uh, early in the first release of Pokemon and base set. Now, there were a couple different variations of this card. You could get the first edition with the shadowed borders. Those are all pretty common. Those are the ones that we see very, very frequently. Uh, now, there was actually a set one with the uh, shadowless border that was a little bit harder to come by. Um... I still think these cards all look fantastic. The cool multi-arms swinging around in the back hollow. Oh, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Next up. Charmander from Hidden Fates. Man, what a leap in generations there. Just going from one right to the other. It's crazy how much cards have changed. But at the same time, they really haven't. Beautiful, beautiful. So this Charmander got a grade 9, pretty nice. Got the 8.5 centering, the 9 on the surface, 9.5 on the corners, and edges. So pretty good grades all around. This thing was very, very cool. This guy also started jumping up in price recently. Everyone started to remember that this guy was in Hidden Fates and started buying him up. Next up, Electivire from Triumphant. Very, very cool card. Got an 8 on the grade, 9 centering, 8 on the surface, 8 on the corners, 8, 5 on the edges. Now, interesting thing about this era of cards. Um, this is a very confusing thing for some people who are a little bit newer to the collecting and hobbies of Pokemon. So this era, there were different types of foils within the game, obviously. There's the regular hollow foils and there's the reverse hollow foils. Generally, the difference being that a reverse holofoil, everything but the picture would be holographic. During this era, what they did is the reverse holofoils were very similar to the holofoils in both instances that the picture was holofoil. However, they would print the set name in the bottom right corner of the card if it was a reverse holographic. So, fun little tidbit for you there. This guy is so cool. I love that lightning foil effect all across. 
that looks fantastic. Always been a fan of lightning and when it comes to the foils and cards. They always make it look so good. And we have another Electivire. Nine centering, eight surface, eight and eight five. Wow, that is an exact duplicate of our last guy. That's kind of cool. So we're not going to spend too much time with him since we've already uh, hit all the cool facts about that guy. Next up, Glaceon from Plasma Freeze. Now, this is the crosshatch holofoil from the City Championships. Anyone that participated in the City Championships for these events would get this Glaceon. Uh, this was during the time of the Plasma Sets, Plasma Freeze, Plasma Storm, and Plasma Blast. All super fun sets that introduced the new Plasma Pokemon with those blue borders and the giant plasma team plasma symbol in the background. There was a lot of really awesome synergy with a lot of these cards, and myself, um, I loved playing the Evolutions because of the versatility they had within this plasma set. To be fair, the Evolutions have always been super versatile in any set. Next up, Shaman from Unleashed. 8.5 on the grade. Overall, 8.5 on the edges, 8 on the corners, 9.5 on the surface, 9 on the centering. Overall, pretty fantastic looking card. This was a very heavily played card as well. Uh, I believe mainly due to the Celebration Wind power on this guy. And that was once during your turn, when you put Shaman from your hand under your bench, you may move as many energy cards attached to your Pokemon as you like to any of your other Pokemon. Super great in coming out of nowhere with a surprise attack that they weren't expecting. Super great if, you know, one of your Pokemon was about to be knocked out and you had a bunch of energy stacked on it. There's just so much versatility with this card. And I love that the uh, Eevee's chilling in the background there too with him. Next up, Rocket Sneak Attack from Team Rocket. This guy got an 8.5 graded near mint, near mint plus... Beautiful old card, 8.5 centering, 9 surfaces, 8.5 corners, and 9 on the edges. This was a fantastic looking card, and I could be wrong, correct me if I am in the comments here, but I believe that the person pictured here was Cassidy? I believe that was the, the Rocket Pair, Cassidy and Butch. I want to say that's Cassidy. I could be wrong. I'm going to have to double check after the video and uh, see if I made a fool of myself there. Next up, Mega Rayquaza EX from Roaring Skies. Roaring Skies was such a fun set. So many good versatile cards between the different Rayquazas from the infamous Shaman. And the Shaman actually caused a couple bit of problems. Um with games taking so long at the time because people could just drop shamans and drop shamans and drop shamans draw through their entire deck. Now when you combine that with like at the time Lysander's Trump card, which was one of the first cards in a very long time to get banned from an active format. And Lysander's Trump card basically said both players shuffle their discard piles back into their deck. And that was just insane. Between that and the Shamans, you could burn through your deck so quickly. But this guy, Mega Rayquaza, man, he he was a heavy hitter. Usually you only played one or two of these guys in your deck, and uh, they pumped out some serious damage. You could come back real quick with that guy. Next up, we got Victory Bell from Jungle. Beautiful hollow foil on this card, and man, is that a beautiful foil. I love seeing these old cards and their foils all clean. Takes me back to my childhood. Feels like I just cracked this fresh out of a pack. Fantastic card. Beautiful on the back. Beautiful on the front. Looks like uh wasn't fully centered. Surface was definitely a little bit little bit of wear to it. I kinda see that now. But overall still beautiful card. Next up. Mr. Mime and that 8.5 as well. So, not too bad. Centering had a 9, 8.5 on the surface, 9 on the corners, and 8.5 on the edges. Another from the jungle set. Very, very beautiful. Uh, another cool thing about the jungle set is there was actually a wave of these where they were printed and they were actually missing the jungle set symbol. 
So a lot of times people would confuse it and put them in their base set collection and stuff like that. But they're actually a little bit rarer and generally hold a little bit more value and kind of cool collectability. Uh, so definitely keep your eyes out. If you uh, notice a jungle card that's missing that set symbol, you would definitely want to pull that aside. Next up, Kids WB Mewtwo from Mewtwo Strikes Back. Another fantastic card. Once again, I love Mewtwo's and Mews, so this was always like one of my favorites growing up that I collected. And just because I love talking about misprints and errors and all that type of cool oddities that happen. Um, back when these were printed, there were a couple sheets of these cards that got put in inverted. So, when they went to go do the Kids WB stamp, instead of it being up in the right-hand corner of the card, they were actually upside down and to the left. It was kind of wonky. There was not very many of them. Um, it's rumored anywhere from maybe like 16 to 100 of each. The exact numbers are pretty unknown. Uh, myself, I have owned two of the Dragonites and uh, one of the Pikachu. The Mewtwo Air has always eluded me, and that's one that I definitely want to add to my collection at one point. But this one is just fine, too. Very, very beautiful card. Next up, another Mewtwo, but in an 8.5. Uh, beautiful 8.5 all across the board, except the edges, which came back at a 9. Very, very fantastic. I'm going to move away. And let's get the next one. Gardevoir from Ruby Sapphire. Very, very fantastic artwork on this card. I love the kind of background swirl that's going on. Very, very good card at the format time, too. Let you search your deck for psychic energy and attach it to your Pokemon. Gave you a lot of energy acceleration. The attack energy burst was fantastic. It did 10 times the number of total energy attached to Gardevoir and the defending Pokemon. Um, kind of early shades to the X-Ball attacks. Um, but overall, this card was such a heavy hitter at the time, too, and did such good damage. Last card on the first pile. Let's take a peek. Zapdos from Generations. Some super cool full art action going on here. These were kind of cool little hidden gems within the Generations. Um, I personally didn't have a lot, a lot of luck pulling them, so I tend to forget these were actually even in the set. Uh, this one came back at an 8 grade, 8 5 centering, 8 5 surface, 8 5 corners, and 7 5 edges. That's 7-5. If that was an 8 or 8-5, this was definitely would have been an 8-5. So, mm, curse you edges. I've always had terrible luck when it came to edge wear on cards. Those always get me in that 1 or 2 point grades. So, we got our first stack done there. We're going to move on to stack number 2. We're almost done with these, but hey, it is so much fun. These cards span all over the generations. We're seeing base set. We're seeing early movie promos. We're seeing stuff from just like within the last couple of years in this box. So this is kind of fun and exciting. I have uh, quite a few cards returning, so I tend to lose track of which box is which. And man, it's kind of more fun that way. Vaporeon EX. Talking about my love of evolutions earlier. We're going back there with Vaporeon. Now, as cool as Vaporeon EX looks, unfortunately, I don't think he had a lot of playability. At least, I never played with him at the time. Um, again, from the Generations packs, not as not as playable, but still a very beautiful looking card. Um, they started doing that expanding artwork again outside of the box, which I just love. It was beautiful, beautiful. 9-5 uh, on the centering, 9 surface, 8 corners, 9 edges. I think that corner, if we would got an 8-5, I think this might have been a 9 telling you, those 0.5 grades can get you sometimes. Next card. Togepi, Black Star promo from the early Pokemon League. Very, very cool card. Comes in at a grade 8 with a 9 centering, 8 surface, 8 corners, and 8.5 edges. Um, I've always loved this card. Togepi just looks so happy and cheerful, just dancing his joys away. Man. So cool, so cool. I do question the background there. I'm kind of wondering where he's at and what he's doing that's making him so happy. Maybe he's got some Togepi friends hanging out in front of him. Maybe he just found Misty. But overall, fantastic card as well. 
Moving on to the next card. Another Togepi at a grade 8. 9 on the Sunring. 8-5 surface, 8 corners, and 8 edges. Pretty comparable to the last one. A couple little sw swapped grades on some of those subgrades. Moving on. Do we have another Togepi? No, Rocket Scizor. Uh, best of game promo. Uh, now, if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm actually not super familiar with the best of game promos. I want to say that maybe they were early event promos from some of the events that they did in like Toys R Us and some of those other third party places that were hosting events. Uh, I know they have the best of, which was like the participation, and then they had the winner ones. Um, if anyone has any more knowledge on where these exactly came from before I uh, poke around at that after the video here, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I would like to see uh, see if anyone can give me some more insight on those guys. Next up, another Rocket Scissor with another Grade 9. 9 centering, 9 surface, 8 5 corners, and 9 on the edges. Pretty comparable to the last one. I think uh, the last one had a couple more subgrades to it. <coughs> Pikachu EX 8.5 from the Legendary Collection. Cool little promo. Um, this was another card that was kind of collected because it was Pikachu. I don't think there was really any playability to this card. Um, it was a really, really cool card, though. Iron Tail, flip a coin until you get tails, does 30 times the number of heads. <coughs> Means you could rack up some very serious damage if you're feeling pretty lucky. But overall, it's, just, it's a, lot of, uh, a lot of luck to put into a card. Next card up, we have Pikachu from Generations, the Radiant Collection. This was one of those cards that I just always knew was going to uh, creep up in value. It's just such a beautiful artwork. I love the charms hanging down from the left side of the artwork. I love the field of flowers. I love the Pikachu cuddle puddle that's going on. It's just such a adorable card. The foil is beautiful. Just everything about this card is fantastic. It really surprised me that it took this long to, for this card to get this much traction. I want to say this is probably my favorite card out of Radiant Collection, if I'm being honest. Super pretty. Excited to have that one back. Next up, another one. This one came back at an 8.5 with that beautiful 9.5 centering. 8.5 on the surface, 8 on the corners, and 9 on the edges. Another fantastic, fantastic card. So... All right, I'm just kind of reading the flavor text on this little guy. Well, in case the description. That's one thing I'm always uh, tend to overlook when it comes to these cards. I tend to overlook some of these descriptions that they put, and they kind of cool. This one is a yellow body is proof of good health. If you touch its bright red cheeks, you'll see its shining, smiling face. Pretty adorable, and they did such a good job at getting the eyes in that holographic pad, and they really shine well. Taking a look at our next card. It is another Pikachu. This one is an 8.5 grade. This one comes from the Mewtwo Strikes Back promo collection we discussed earlier. Uh, beautiful 9.5 on the centering, 9 on the surface, 8.5, eight, 8 when it comes to the corners and edges. Now, this is the one that I discussed earlier, that I do have a copy of the infamous error with these guys. Uh, don't have it anywhere near me, otherwise I'd show it off. But it's uh, it's really, really cool to see this when the stamp gets inverted up here. Um, such a treat. But regardless, I loved this very simple background on this card. The black with the lightning bolt. Pikachu in his glorious chunky days of the early Pokemon. Fantastic artwork. And we have another from the Black Star... Mewtwo Strike Back promos. This one came back in a 9. A uh, little bit nicer when it comes to the edges. And I think that's about the only thing that beat the last one. In fact, the last one had better centering. So that really shows that only that 0.5 grade can make a difference between an A5 and a 9. 
Next up is Nine Tails for Call of Legends Hollow. Another fantastic artwork. This thing is just so gorgeous. They did so good on this one. I love that the gem is just radiating, but it doesn't take away from the beauty of the Nine Tails. And man, this artist, they did a fantastic job on this card. And this was one of those cards that was also extremely playable in addition to the beautiful artwork, mainly because of Roast Reveal. So, once during your turn, you could discard a Fire Energy from your hand, and if you did draw three cards, it was great for acceleration, getting through your deck quicker, um, not to mention be able to recycle those Fire Energies from your discard pile, as Fire types generally like to do. Next up, we have a Muck from Fossil. Beautiful 9 grade, 8 5 centering, 9 on the surface, 9 5 on the corners, and 9 on the edges. Overall, the card is in fantastic condition, it looks like. Man, the back is pretty, the front is pretty. I love that fresh, crispy, hollowed foil. Not a single scratch on it, it looks like. That is fantastic. Next up, Zapdos from Fossil as well. This is, now if you know, this is the Hollow Corrected. Uh, the reason being is there are quite a bunch of the early runs of this card where the foil almost was like cracked off on this upper left hand corner of the artwork. And because of that, it's actually a pretty common misprint. Though when it comes to these Zapdos, I tend to almost see more of the corrected versions than I do of the uh, actual misprints. So this came back with uh, 9.5 centering, 8.5 surface, 8 corners, 8 edges, a beautiful 8 span across the board, except that centering so close to a 10. But overall, very, very fantastic looking card. Very beautiful. Another very... F Man. These early cards, I just look at them and I lose words. So... Last card of this pile. Ditto from Fossil. Another very fantastic looking artwork here. The card just... Very interesting artwork. I kind of want to know where this little guy is at. Got a checker ground, or checker board ceiling above him. Checker board ceiling below him, it looks like. You can just kind of barely tell in the background. He's just kind of vibing somewhere. Doesn't look too happy to be there, though. This one came back at a 8.5. Beautiful 8.5 on the centering, 8.5 on the surface, 8.5 on the corners, 9 on the edges. Would have been cool to have a 8.5 uh, on the edges, like, not to, you know, sell myself short of the 9 edge wear, but sometimes having those quad numbers is just a little bit more cooler than the 3 and the 1 random one that's a little bit better. But still, fantastic, beautiful artwork, very clean hollow foil. I love, 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 love those early cards when they're that clean. Let's move on to the next one here. Final pile, guys. We're almost through. And man, do they look amazing. Here we go. Another ditto, 8.5. Got the 9 centering, 9 surface, 8.5 corners, 8.5 edge wear. So, looks like uh, we were not too far off from the last one as well. Except we had the double 9 and the double 8.5 this time around. Bet you if one of those centering or surface was a 9.5, we would have squeaked up to a 9 on that guy. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Next up, Dark Blastoise. Beautiful card from Team Rocket. Came back at a 9. Had 9 centering, 8.5 surface, 9 on the corners, 9 on the edges. Now, I don't believe I was playing too heavily at the uh, Team Rocket era. I was collecting... And Dark Blastoise has just been always one of my favorite cards. Both the foil and the non-foil of this card look amazing. And, man. Still looks good to this day. Nice crisp lines on the card. That background of the Blastoise is fantastic. The shadow. All beautiful touches. And, Hauntor. Fossil. Another cool bit of history with this guy. Uh, there were a very common error that happened with these that they had what we referred to as 
kind of like little ink hickeys that would occur within the foil of the card where we'd almost get like a very oil-like effect of like blues and purples and it looks super fantastic. Uh, I've only come across one once and I have that in my personal collection. Uh, this one seems to be just the regular one. Came back with a 9.5 centering, 8.5 on the surface, 8.5 on the corners, and 8 on the edges for an overall grade of 8.5. Very, very beautiful looking card too. Another one of those old foils that I just love how they looked. Very simplistic background, made you really focus on the art of the Pokemon itself. Moving on to the next one. Kabutops from Fossil. Came back at a 9, 8.5 centering, 9 on the surface, 9 on the corners, and 9 on the edges. Almost quad 9s on that one. I keep getting those reverse styles of either 3 eight fives and a 9 or 3 9s and an 8.5. A little frustrating, but still kind of cool. Looks like this guy has some print lines going through his foil, but still. Fantastic card nonetheless. Moving to our next card, we have another Kabutops, the non-foil variant, but first edition this time. This one came back with a beautiful 9-5 centering, 7-5 on the surfaces, 6-5 on the corners, four corners, and 7 on the edges. Beautiful thick first edition stamp on this guy. Now if we're looking at him, this is one reason I love the non-foils a little bit more. I feel like the colors just pop so much more on these guys. In fact, all over the artwork seems to be a lot darker. Still, very, very beautiful. Moving on to our next card. Charizard V from Champion's Path Elite Trainer Box. It has been so fun watching the value of this card kind of bounce all over the place. Uh, when they first came out, I know these things were almost like $30, $40, which paid for almost half of the ETB alone. Uh, I know stories of people buying mass quantities of these things, thinking that they were going to be the next big thing. And you got to remember, Champion's Path was a very heavily anticipated set. So with so many people opening them and so many people getting this card, it doesn't surprise me that he eventually found his way to the, uh, I want to say, 8 to $10 range in pricing. But still, beautiful artwork. I always kind of look at it, and I think he's given me kind of a thumbs up. I think it would have been a lot cooler if they did that. But I'm not going to knock the artwork. Overall, it was still amazing looking. Love the foil. Love the pink background. That was kind of a cool touch. Next up, another Charizard V from the Champion's Path Elite Trainer Box. So this one came back with an 8.5 on the centering, 9.5 on surface, 10 on the corners, and 9.5 on the edges. Man. If we would have popped a 9 or a 9.5 on that centering, this easily would have been that 9.5 range too. Next up, speaking of 9.5s, we have a 9.5 of the Charizard V. Looks like we got almost quad 9.5s all across the board on this guy. Gonna move a little quicker here since we're hitting quite a few of these guys. This one find this kind of funny. So we had one previous one that came back with corners 10. There's another 10 on the corners, which is quite surprising because these things rattle around quite a bit in those Champion's Path boxes. So I always think corners are going to be the one that are going to get the ding, that or the edges. Moving on. Another one. Again, third 10 on the corners. Man, that is surprising to me. Still, I'm not going to say no to it. I would love to flip one of these bad boys over and just see a beautiful, pristine 10. Is this the one? Nope! It looks like we've moved away from the Charizards, finally. So, we have the Team Magma's Groudon EX from Double Crisis. So, Double Crisis was a very small set that got released. You could only buy it in special blister packs. Um, and a couple other promotional packs, I think, as well. But there wasn't really any active booster boxes or elite trainer boxes of this set that I'm... Well, booster boxes I know for sure. 95% sure no on the Elite Trainer boxes. But there's some fantastic artwork in this entire set. Um, ironically enough, the most playable card was a trainer and it was a stadium. It was a Team Magma one. Just because I knew it uh, put damage counters on Pokemon in between turns that had abilities, if I remember correctly. I think those shops were around 8 to $10 a piece at one time. 
continuing. Clefairy from base set. Beautiful 8 on the grade, 8 5 centering, 8 on the surface, 8 5 on the corners, and 8 on the edges. Card looks pretty clean overall. Centering, I can definitely see, we're heavily shifted to the left. Oh, yeah, if we're looking at the back of it, man, that is a crazy shift. I'm surprised to knock that centering grade down a little bit harder on that one. Next up, Hitmonchan from base set. Beautiful 9 grade, 9 centering, 8 5 surface, 9 5 corners, and 9 on the edges. Very crisp, clean foil. Not a lot of scratches on that foil either, which is amazing. These saw a lot of wear usually, and uh, if I remember correctly, Hitmon chains were pretty well known for warping. I don't know why. Gengar from Fossil. This guy always creeps me out, I'm not gonna lie. That just evil grin, the red eyes. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Gengar, but this artwork in particular, just always something real creepy about it. And, uh, I know I keep going back to it, and I apologize, but seeing these old cards with that beautiful foil that's so crisp and not scratched up just really takes me back to my childhood. Hmm. 8.5 on the edge just makes sense. A lot of edge wear all around the card here on the front. Back doesn't look terrible, though. Alright, guys, we're down to the final three. Here we go. What do we think? More, more old goodies? More new? We'll find out. Gyarados from base set. Beautiful 8.5 grade. 10 on the corners. That is fantastic. 9.5 on the edges. Oh my god, that surface of an 8. Oh man, if that would have been just a little bit better, I'm pretty sure we would have scored a 9. Even a 9.5 if we would have gotten really high grade up there. Yeah, I think if we would have gotten a 9 on the surface, we might have gotten a 9.5 on this guy. I could be wrong, though. I could be uh, overestimating and overzealous on that, but another fantastic looking card. Two cards left. And another Gyarados. So this one got 9s across the board, except the 9.5 on the corners. Not as nice as the last set of corners, but everything else came back so much nicer. I love all the little tidbits that they would used to put underneath the card, too, showing the length, the weight, the type of the Pokemon. Atrocious Pokemon. I mean, that's fair. Gyarados is pretty scary. And our final card of today. Once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in as we check out our last card. Chansey. Fantastic Chansey. 8.5 grade, 9.5 centering, 8.5 surface, 9 corners, and 8.5 on the edges. A very simplistic, beautiful hollow foil in the background. Didn't need anything fancy. Didn't need any landscapes. Just sometimes simplicity wins. Like, I love all the new cards, don't get me wrong. They're beautiful and over the top, but something about just the simplicity of just a nice hollow foil background with nothing distracting, taking away from the Pokemon. Chansey looks so happy to be there. Looks so happy to be helping. This card was fantastic back in the day, too. Man. Overall, a fantastic and wonderful card. Once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today uh, for Collector's Edition 101. I hope you learned something new, and if you didn't, I hope you at least enjoyed looking at all of these beautiful cards. I know we went through a lot from gold stars to energy fillers to cards from all over the eras of Pokemon, from base set until Shining Legends, Generations, a lot of the newer stuff that just recently came out. Um... It was a lot of fun looking at all of these that came in today. And if you saw anything that you did like, you know, feel free to check out our website, which is CE101. You can find that down in the bottom left-hand corner. Check out our website. Uh, you're going to find all of these cards that you saw today and more. 
And so here is the website. And if you go on to Collector's Edition 101 today, or as soon as you can, and use code WELCOME at checkout, that's going to score you 10% off the entire website. Well, you know, at least your order. <laughs> All sorts of fun cards. You're going to find everything from retro cards to newer cards, cool collectible cards. You can even find some cool merchandise from various events and other things like that. So, once again, thank you for tuning in to Collector's Edition 101.